Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, it's an honor to be between all of you. I can see a lot of I can see a lot of hard work and creativity, so I'm lucky to be with you all of you. So thank you. So this wasn't my first experience at the US, but I was so lucky to be in UCSF. It's a very good and very prestigious medical institution. But actually at this time I decided to enjoy my life, decide to do my research. So I was taking photographs like this one. I think it's during the Gateway program at the beginning of my Fulbright experience. I was participating in many uh, marches and rallies advocating for human rights, women rights, and science. So go women and go science. I see a lot of women here, many women here, go women. I was so lucky having many friends from east to west, north to south. I was so lucky. And I believe this is one of the goals of the Fulbright to expand networks and connections. Uh, I was so lucky even to meet some celebrities like Rasim Yusuf away from politics, but I didn't imagine to meet him in Egypt, I lived in San Francisco. And as a good citizen of San Francisco, I was going behind our baseball team's giants, and I was eating uh, vegan hot dogs while watching the games, and all of this was done beside doing my research. So, regarding my research, I'd like to reintroduce myself as a clinician scientist. Okay, I like working with children. I'm an astronomist, by the way, so I do braces and wires. This is essential, but at the same time, I'm a researcher. And I always had many questions in my mind, like, why do looks like this? And what's the difference between us and baboons, between chimpanzees, who are sharing a lot of similarities, but at the same time, there is a lot of differences in between. So today, I'm trying to answer two questions. The first, can environment shape how we look like? I don't know. Actually, I know, but we will see later. And actually, is this epigenetic changes could be transmitted into the next generations, and this is would be very interesting. And by the way, this is not a recent issue. This is taking a lot of attention worldwide because people now are saying it's not only your genes, like deciding who are you or what's becoming to your life. It's actually the environment around you as well, like uh, the water you are drinking. Your activities, your physical activities, uh, your stress, if you have a lovely wife or amazing husband, so I don't know if it's affecting or not. All of this is affecting our bodies. And I believe our jaws is part of our bodies. Our jaws are not living in, on Moon or Mars, still it's in our body. So I was interested to know what is the effect of environment on our jaws, or upper and lower jaw. And actually some of these um, experiments are not ethical to be conducted on human beings, so we were doing them on mice because actually they are very good candidate as an animal model, they look like human in a lot of stuff, like physiology and genetics. So what we did actually, we give mice hard, hard food, like they express a lot of action or a lot of force to choose this food, and they give them this hard food for 15 generations. So 15 generations of mice were taken on the hard food. And actually 15 generations in mice is equal like 300 years in human life. And then after 15 generations, we switched the hard diet into soft diet. And then after 15 generations of soft diet, we switched them back into hard diet. And we were interested to see how it's going to affect our jobs. And not our actually, the mice jobs is going to affect how it looks like or not. So we did a series of micro CT scans and statistical shape analysis to see if the jars are going to change or not. And interestingly, actually, they changed. And after a shaping part of the joints of the mice, we can see with the hard diet mice, they actually had a more short or squeezed joint than the soft diet. And using a principal component analysis, we can see, actually, the color is not that good, but the soft diet mice were clustered on one side, and the hard diet mice were clustered on the other <coughs> side, which means each group had a characteristic morphologies or shapes. So now we can see that altering diet could lead to change in our shapes. And actually, to go to the next question, we were interested to know when we switched the diet, 
these changes were switched or transferred to the second generation. Actually, we can find it, but still the colors, I'm sorry, are not that great. But when, when we transitioned the diet, the mice didn't look exactly with the new type of food. Actually, they were sharing some of the characteristics of their parents. They were taking hard food or soft diet. So, going back to our questions, yes, environment can lead to some changes on how we look like. And actually, these changes could be transmitted into the next generation. And we could prove this by the phenotype or the shape of our jaws. This is actually not the end of the world. Still, we need to go through the epigenetics markers and genetics tools to see on the um, genetic level or the molecular level how the shapes were changing with the effect of the environmental factors. Um, before thanking my mentors, I would like to give a take-home message, which, which is don't be selfish, because what you are doing in yourself is not only affecting you, it's affecting your kids and affecting your grandkids. So take care of yourself and don't be selfish. I would like to thank my mentors, I would like to thank my friends, I would like to thank my institution, I would like, I would like to thank the Fulbrights for giving me the chance to be here today, and I enjoy your time and enjoy your folks. Thank you.